Hello. In this second uh, tutorial for Skid, we're just going to see how to add some of the most important resources into Skid. Skid is a really great program, but it's not very useful to you unless you plug in uh, some programs and data into Skid. So we're going to look at two things, two resources that we want to add into Skid. Uh, the first is going to be a database, and the second is going to be analysis engines. Both of these you have to add to Skid. They don't come with it. I will include in the information for this video links so that you can go and download some databases and some engines yourself. And we'll assume that you've already downloaded those and I'll show you how to add them into Skid and how to make some brief usage of them. So first of all I want to go to File, Open, and this is how I'm going to bring in a database. So I'm going to go to my desktop and on my desktop I have this ICOF 2300 database which is a great database of about a million games played by players over 2300. So I'm going to double click that and even though it's a pretty large database it opens really quickly and you can see here that I have some games going back to 1837 and if I open the game list, which we saw in tutorial one, we have games as late as 2013. So a really great range of great games by a lot of strong players. So one of the most important things that you can do with a database is you can look at the tree, which shows you how often certain moves are played. This is really important when you're trying to look at openings and you want to gain some insights into the most common opening moves. So I'm going to go over and click this tree button here and we see here that I get this tree which is the tree for the very beginning of the chess game. The least common move in this particular tree is F3, a poor move but it's been played twice by, in games by players over 2300. I'm going to move this down here so I can see uh, both the notation and the tree here. And now I'm just going to show you briefly how this tree works by looking at an opening that I like to play sometimes. An opening that I like to play sometimes is the Shigorin defense as black, and so I can play d4, d5, c4, and now this move knight c6, which is the fourth most common move here, but it's much less common than these three moves above it, leading to the queen's gambit, slav, and queen's gambit accepted structures knight c6 and we see here that white tends to do fairly well this is a little bit of an offbeat line and white scores about 60 percent on average in the Chagorin defense it's a pretty good score for white a typical score might be something like 55 to 56 percent for white in most lines here we can see the frequency 584 games played with this knight c3 move 453 with knight f3, and 340 with c takes d5. Those are certainly the main options that white has here. For a moment, we're just going to look at this e3 line, which is a less common option. It's not necessarily bad, but it usually indicates that white doesn't know what he's doing, and I tend to do well against this line. Black's move here, you can see, is almost always e5. And now, if white were to capture here, the second option would transpose back into the capture immediately that white could have done before playing e3. But let's say that white plays this move, which we see is less pop or is more popular, but is less theoretically good, scoring a lower percentage for white. So we capture, and now white play or black plays pawn to d4 here. A strong pawn sacrifice. Now white can play a3. And he does fairly well after a3, a reasonable score, but not better than his other Shigorin lines. And he can also play e takes d4, which is the move that almost everyone has played against me. And now we can see that queen takes d4, queen takes d4, and knight takes d4 has been played quite a few times. And here, black has a good score. He scores a little better. Now we want to be a little skeptical because there's only eight games, so that's not a huge sample. But in general, I can say that this is very good compensation for the pawn for black. He gets a great knight in here. He has a threat to fork the king and the rook over here. And he quickly develops his bishops out like so, and he castles. And I've won several games very quickly in this line. 
So that's how we can use the tree here using our database over here, this ICOF 2300 database. Now let's say that we want to add our second resource in, an analysis engine. So I'm going to go to Tools Analysis Engines here and you see that I've got a few in already. Some of these came with SCID and I added the critter one. I'm going to add another one now and I'm going to just go to New. So I've got New and I'm going to type in the name of this engine, Stockfish, one of the most popular and powerful engines. And I just need to browse here and I've got it in my desktop and I'm going to load in the Stockfish engine, Stockfish here. Okay, And I can add some of this other information if I want to but it's not really important for our purposes. It's mostly uh, just some information that you uh, can add so that you can find information about the engine again. For instance if you wanted to add a rating estimated for the engine you could do that here. So let's just click OK. And we see that that's added to the analysis engines options that I have here. And I'm going to just leave Stockfish selected. I'm going to click Start. And we see now I got a new pane for this Stockfish engine and we can see its analysis. I only want to see four lines here, so I'm just going to go and set that to four lines so I can see the four most popular options. We can see here, for instance, that Bishop d3 is really white's best choice in this position, and all the other moves are really good for black. In fact, their king moves and a uh, rather awkward knight move over here, and some of them are close to winning for black. Now let's back up a little bit and use the engine to look at what we were checking out earlier. So after this position here, we can see that this d takes e5 is actually liked by Scott Fish initially, but we see that the evaluation drops a little bit. And so if we take that pawn for white, we see that d4 pops up as the most popular option. And then we see that this a3 option, this one that we said is sort of a newer line, you can see it's more recently played on average than this e takes d4 line, is one that Stockfish likes quite a bit. Although the evaluations are kind of tanking, and I think that white black still has pretty good compensation after a3. The engine tends to be a little bit greedy, so it overestimates the compensation. But you see, given a little more time to think, it drops that down but A3 is still probably its top choice. And then if we play C takes D4 here and we follow this exchange, we see that at this point the engine thinks that white has a small advantage, but that this isn't necessarily huge, especially given that black has sacrificed a pawn. Um, here you can see that after a little time to think, there's really a very fractional advantage for white in this case. So we think that black would have really, really good compensation here. So that's all we want to show here is just how to get in a database, how to look at the tree for that database, and then how to add an analysis engine into SCID. These resources, databases and engines, are really what you need to be able to take full advantage of SCID. SCID is a really great program, but you need to be able to add these in to uh, get the most out of the program.